What's up you guys, Stoops back again, and today I'm going to show you how to heal inside the World of Warcraft arena. Alright everyone, today I'm going to try something a little bit different. Uh, it's going to be a new series that I will be starting on my channel. Uh, I don't know how much growth this will you know, cause for my channel, but I do know it will be very helpful for a lot of players. Uh, what I will be doing today is I'm going to be um, analyzing and critiquing and coaching some outsider viewer gameplay. So I had someone nice enough uh, send me David, he sent me some Mistweaver gameplay. This is a lower level of MMR. Um, he sent me some Mistweaver gameplay and I will be reviewing it um, in this video, going over his plays, his misplays, things that he did well, things that he could improve on. Um, I do have now a Paladin, a Monk, and a Shaman, and as well as a Priest. So I have several healers now. I will be uh, making a uh, video hopefully for all types of healers. This is not just for Mistweaver So if you do play another healer, this will be very helpful for you in terms of positioning cooldown use and just general awareness I will provide some tips some things that he could have done better Just a little bit of a disclaimer, please 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 do not go in my comments and just start trashing this player to be quite honest, I'm not interested in that at all. I'll just remove your comment. That's not the channel that I have here. He was nice enough, and honestly, quite frankly, he had the balls to send me some of his own gameplay so I could analyze it for your benefit. So if you wanna go in the comments and be a keyboard warrior, go ahead, feel free, but I'm just gonna remove your comment. I'm not interested in that. I think we should all commend this guy for sending in his gameplay for your benefit. All right, everyone, for the sake of this video, as you can see, I kind of removed my stream interface and moved my webcam to the right portion of the screen, uh, just so you could see hopefully the Gladius as you can, and then you can see his raid interface and his UI, um, just to better understand what he's using and just so I can point out um, more of his mistakes. Just a little bit of a tip, I just chopped this footage up. I haven't previewed any of it, um, and I did that just so I can give you guys my live analysis. Um, so you are seeing this for the first time as well as I am. Uh, I just cut up about four clips of the game because it was kind of a long video uh, and I will point out some of the things. I'll try not to be very harsh about it, but this is for the benefit of you as well as my friend David. So um, this is just for your guys' growth. Hopefully I don't come off too hard. This is my first time doing it, but I'm just going to try and point out things that you could improve on. Uh, so it looks like you are playing a warrior a survival hunter, it looks like, and you're facing in this comp a Fury Warrior Destruction Warlock Wrestler. Not a very common comp, but this is, uh, I guess, uh, pretty... These random comps are common at a lower level of MMR, and I think this is anywhere from like 1500 or so, which is the majority of World of Warcraft players. Many people aren't above 1500. In fact, many people don't do arenas, but these videos should help you guys feel a little bit more confident when playing as a healer. And again, this video should apply to all healers. I'm sure there's a lot of things I can point out in terms of positioning uh, or um, mana pres preservation, uh, and I will take other healer videos. So if you play a different class, please send me uh, your footage and I'll release the details on how you guys can do that at the end of the video. Okay, so hopefully you come out here and you use Thunder Focus T on both your targets. It looks like you're clicking. Um, so quick thing, you didn't use your Thunder Focus T at the start of the match, which is what you always wanna do once the gates open to get Renewing Mist on both your targets. This is gonna really preserve your mana. Um, it's gonna increase the likelihood that it spreads. Having hots rolling across your group will, again, preserve your mana so you don't have to heal as much. Um, and we'll talk about how you can use your Thunder Focus T to really save your mana. And it also looks like you're not using Mana T this game, which I highly, highly, highly recommend, especially when playing against comps that do a lot of damage uh, like this one. I do like that you set your portal down here and it looks like you're in the middle of setting your statue. So, so far, so good. Uh, this map, or I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of issues on this map just because it's very difficult for players to understand, I think, where to stand on this map because a lot of the times when you're using when you're playing with these melee teams they generally take the fight like over here and it really puts you in an awkward position if you don't know where to stand so we'll see that but again please bind your allies i can't trust this enough a lot of people ask me how they can improve or what can they do better and then i find out they're still clicking their frames and they say well it's too many key bindings or i just can't get used to it 
that's how you improve. It's too slow to click. I highly recommend that you guys just take the two week time period, that necessary time to suck for two weeks because you don't know how to key bind and it's so clunky for you to click and you know use your key bindings to target your allies, but it's so crucial because it's too slow to click spells, man. It's just, you need to do this. This is the growing pain necessary to get to pass 2K. You're never gonna get there, I, I swear it's impossible. And if you have, you're probably playing some OP comp or an OP class, or you just got really lucky, but you need to key bind your allies as a healer. Uh, so we're not gonna talk about the clicking anymore just because it's, we, we mentioned. Okay, so, perfect. Right here, you're okay positioning because you're in portal range. But I guarantee you once you get over here, you're not, and you're gonna have to. You see how they're fighting over here? You're actually in a bad spot. What you wanted to do is you wanna go to the box over here. So on this side of the mini map, if you see my cursor on the mini map, you can see it. You, well, it looks weird. You're actually, you, you actually wanna be over here, I guess. But you wanna be on this side of the map because they're gonna take the fight down these stairs and you're gonna have to come over here. I guarantee you, you're either gonna fly this way and jump down and be in a bad spot, or you're gonna be over here, but you will not be in your portal range and you've already wasted one cheat torpedo. So if the warrior decides to fly over here and hit you, your only out is to probably cheat torpedo away and then now you have no mobility other than your portal. And without Mistwalk, you cannot afford to do that. And I know a lot of people are complaining about mobility as a Mistweaver. It's probably because you're cheat torpedo and just win willy nilly uh, like you just did there. So um, right now you want to get the enveloping on this guy. You jump down, didn't have, to, you're, you're, you're putting yourself in a really bad spot here. You should have just went over back over here and you're also in portal range over here and you're no longer in your portal range. So you need to set a new portal you need this teleport always around you, off cooldown, always around you, super, super, super important. And as a healer, again, any healer, you guys want to be on the box side because you're they, every caster team will always pull you to these stairs. So you need to find a spot that you can be um, where you're in range. So like standing over here, and if they were fighting right here, if you were standing on this little ledge, you could heal them. They're on this side, so you need to get to this side. Otherwise, this druid's gonna eat you, eat you alive with Cyclone, or the Fury Warrior's gonna fear you, or the Warlock's gonna fear you. Let's see what happens. Taking a lot of damage, no enveloping is on right now. And he's taking this much damage. That thing needs to go off ASAP, right now. This druid's also, <laughs> I don't know if he knows what he's doing. He's spamming healing touch and everyone's already topped. He should just displace her beast and punish you for standing over here, stun you into a cyclone, and this guy would be dead. Or shelled. One or the other. Uh, he shouldn't be doing this. The, obviously, the druid doesn't understand what he's doing um, in terms of his class as well. I'm not saying that you don't understand what you're doing, but yeah, there's obviously a lot of work that he needs to improve on. Nice chi wave use. Okay, you got your enveloping, but you're way too close. And you're doing this because you're freaking out because they're on this little staircase. You should have just been on that side, on that side of the map. Um, he's still casting Healing Touch. This is the wrong move. You already ate a stun. I'm assuming you're gonna get feared out of this. He should have Cyclone you. Uh, but the enveloping came up just a little too late. So there's a stun, trap on the Druid. Still no Cyclone cast, but there's a fear coming. Uh, I'm sure you're gonna eat this. Feared, nice enveloping rolling. Revival, not necessary there. You didn't have to do that. You could just, don't panic. Just get envelopings up on both guys using your Soothing Mist with AMA, which looks like you're using. Okay, nice. Holding that way too long. This is too long. If you're running up something towards everybody, guarantee you get kicked here. And there it is. Get to that box. Uh, this is the wrong box. You want to be on that box because you're not near a portal, so you have nowhere to go. You're spamming F fuses. You don't have to do that. Remember, you're using Soothing Mist. You can just do this and it, get enveloping's going. Oh, that's unfortunate. Cheat torpedo into the waterfall. That sucks. Uh, you're in a bad spot again. So here, you just want to go over here because they're over here. Also, it doesn't look like you have your allies unit framed. So it's hard to see where your allies are, even for me. Enemies are good, but allies are almost even more important, I would say. Enemies are just as important, if not more important, but allies are necessary just so you can see where they are. Or just use raid frames, uh, which I mean, or use raid target, like raid, what are they called, symbols, like those little skulls and things like that. It's just hard to see where everyone is. I don't know how you know where they are. Uh, you're eating another fear because you're in a bad spot. This guy is so low. You cocooned him. Let's rewind that back and see why you did that. 
I'm not trying to pick on you, I just want to see for my own purposes, so... Because you jumped off... Uh, let's see... You're... Not necessary, you don't gotta do that. You wasted the cooldown there. Now he's in trouble. Right now, what you should have done is you should have just threw up an enveloping. It looks like you have Thunder Focus T up. You always want to do enveloping Thunder Focus T FUs first, and if that's not gonna fly, then Cocoon. You're gonna get more healing from an enveloping mist into a Thunder Focus T FUs. That's gonna heal for so much because Thunder Focus T adds 200% to a fuse, FUs, however you wanna pronounce it. And then enveloping also adds another 40%. So that's 240%. And if you're running Fortune Turned, it can be up to 340% on a fuse. That's like a million at least. So very, very important that you do that over Cocoon. Cause now this guy's in trouble and you don't really have anything. He should Cyclone you. Uh, he just ran away. I don't know what he's doing. Uh, nice. You're casting. You don't have to do that. You got kicked, but the hots are rolling, so you're okay right now. Nice. Uh, I like that end cap. You're casting vivifies. I guess it was the bonus one, so I do like that. You're very smart at using your mana. I do like how you're using your spells. I just don't like that you're not using enveloping enough. You do have it here. You know, you do have it there. It just doesn't show on your rage fan, which is also super annoying. I, don't, I hate how this game does that. There's nothing on him, though. You need to get that renewing up right away. This needs to go off. There you go. Good job. Enveloping. You don't have to cast it, man. You have Ancient Mystery Arts. And you're also in a bad spot again. You just ate the stun. Just, they're over here fighting. Go over here. Go in that. Just keep playing the adjacent boxes. Okay. So we won't comment on the casting anymore. I just think that you have to get used to using your Soothing Mist a little bit more, casting F fuses. But you're, you're topping everyone. I do like this. You're still in a weird spot though, man. You got to get out of here. You need to be on this side of the box or on this side of the box. The guy can just keep stunning you and fearing you. Um, I know it's hard and you're, I'm sure you're just super hyper focused on these little health bars right here, but the guy's standing right in front of you. Holding Soothing Mist too long, too long. You're running in there trying to stop the heal. Ah. Uh, Okay, not a bad leg sweep. Not a bad one. You don't have anywhere to portal though. Like, you if they were good, man, they would punish you so fast. That druid would just stop casting and bash you and cyclone you and you'd be screwed. You need to have your portal in range. So I would have set my portal over here or just have one over here, but you're not using this at all. You haven't really had to, but if you needed to, you couldn't because you're not in range for it. Uh, eating another fear, okay. I do like this, that you can see where your Shailene's gift is. That's really cool. Another stun. They're doing a pretty good job at CCing you. You're, this is, don't do this. You are spamming this in, this paralysis is gonna be useless. Like, what are you gonna use it on? Like the Fury War is cleaving, your Hunter's hitting everything. They're already on DR for sap. You probably didn't notice that, but this isn't gonna do anything. It's just gonna put you in a weird spot. And also you can see how your allies have once again, Falling down this side of the map. So you're gonna have to run around here. This guy's gonna die, I think. You have to run around here. If you were just on this side of the map, man, it would've been golden. And you have your portal on the other, you have your portal like right over here as well. So if you came over here, your portal's there, much better spot. Uh, okay, the Warlock looks like he's dead. All right, not so bad. Uh, let's go into this next game. So you're facing an Assassination Rogue, uh, Discipline Priest, Affliction Warlock. Okay, looks like it's gonna be a lot of interrupts on you. Um, hopefully, we, we, I mean, I know you can't change anything, but it looks like we really need to improve on our positioning. We, we need to make sure that we're using our Thunder Focus team much more effectively. It's spreading our renewings. And you need to not be standing in the open so much and also using your portal a little bit more. Um, and then you're using your defensives way, way too fast. I always say use your cocoon early, but it looks like you're using your defensives now, a little... Uh, they're not necessary, if that's the best way I can put it. So smash shards, you're gonna come out here. You're dropping your portal, I like that. Um, you got sapped, it looks like adaption broke it. And you are do you're spending your renewings, so I like this. Holding to be missed, uh, okay, it's not bad. Nice chi wave. You're coming in for, you don't have to chi torpedo. You know, I always say, you, you, you don't need to, just just walk in. Just, just walk in, you, you don't have to. Chi Torpedo, you know, don't waste your mobility. It's it's like Displacer Beast, you know, you don't have to Displacer Beast to get somewhere. Just walk in, just walk over there. Backpedaling, I won't comment on that. Uh, FUs, nice use of that. You're gonna get kicked, dude. You're holding that, you're holding that thing way too long. Let's see. Uh, reapplying it, okay. 
The paralysis not necessary there. Okay, I'm another enemy team. You're holding that thing. I'm surprised they haven't kicked you yet. They're not punishing you. But you so far so good. This match looks a lot better. Okay, there it is. You're holding a little too long there. Uh, paralysis, nice. Oh man, okay, I can already see what's gonna happen here. I can already see it happening. You're doing that strategy where you sap something and then all of your attention is drawn to this guy and he's taking a lot of damage right now. He's getting drain sold. So this guy's gonna take the most damage right now. Uh, and you're gonna just focus on ceasing this rogue. And this guy's gonna, you're gonna blow a ton of cocoon, uh, something. Something's gonna get blown on this guy. There it is. You swept him. He's already really low. You didn't have to do that. If you would have just healed him while you were waiting for that stun to go off, instead of just drawing all of your attention on stunning him, you didn't have to waste your cocoon there. Um, but, you know, I also don't see how you know when they're, there it is, there's your interrupt bar. But I, I don't think you had to use that. Priest is really low. Oh my gosh, kidney shot on you. I like the Shaylin's gift thing. Your UI is gangster, bro. I really like it. Um, getting really low. Oh my god. Okay, what you were doing, you got stuck. Okay, so you need to reapply your soothing mist on him. What happened was, is you were targeting him, but you hadn't reactivated soothing mist on him. So you're pumping heals, and you can see it here. You're pumping your heals into yourself because because you're trying to target him, but you haven't reapplied the key binding for Soothing Mist. So it looks like it's like Shift G for you. I don't know if that's what it is, but just make it something a little bit easier for yourself. I don't know what that is for you, but yeah, you wanna you wanna make sure you're reapplying here. So you're gonna have to use your revival or something. Oh my God, he's dead. Oh, that wow, that one second revival. Yeah, just a misplay there by not reapplying your Soothing Mist. Uh, F you spamming, you don't have to do that. It's big effuses. He did turtle shell, but you could just enveloping and then go, and he'd be topped. But big effuses there. Also, you can instant cast the mist with effuse. Wow, you killed the priest. Okay, not bad, not bad, not bad. I mean, a little bit better than the last game. Your positioning was a little off. You also got too focused on doing too much CC there. Um, you're holding soothing mist a little too long. You don't make use of your port as much as I'd like you to. I do like the way you sped renewings up and then you, you're still spamming spells. I think it, it looks like to me that you're still getting used to Soothing Mist. So this is probably for, good for a lot of people out there. All right, so for this last game here, I just noticed that you died at the end. That's all that I've seen for this match. You are facing an Arms Warrior, Unholy DK, Resto Druid, which is a TSG type of comp. Um, I'm gonna look to see, to, to see what you did wrong and what kind of led to your eventual death. I'm gonna assume it's a lot of movement and placement issues and just judging pa on your past games, I'm gonna assume that you weren't using your port effectively, getting the max range on your transcendence transfer. I'm gonna assume that you were cheat torpedoing unnecessarily, perhaps going in for CC when you should not have. Um, that's what I'll be assuming and I'm gonna look for that uh, just to show you and then the viewers also at home, you know, what you could have done differently and um, just how to maximize your port distance, especially when facing these types of comps with an Arms Warrior and an Unholy DK because they are really hard to get these classes off of you because they have grip and charge and things like that. So um, let, let's, let's get this match started and see what you do. Uh, so starting out, uh, I'm assuming you're gonna drop your port like you've done in the past. Again, we're not gonna comment on not using Thunder Focus T because you haven't done that in your previous matches. So renewing's out, portal set. Uh, you still haven't dropped your statue, so I'm assuming you're gonna drop it here soon. There it is. You're rotating your hots. Okay, right here again, you are not using your enveloping fast enough. He's taking a lot of damage here, and I really think that you need to get better at putting out your envelopings earlier on. If you can kind of predict when the uh, ally, your ally is taking a, is going to take damage from these melee cleave comps, you can prevent a lot of extra mana spending. Um, pumping him to try to get him top because a lot of as healers we have an inclination to always want to top our allies um, this is not faulty thinking but being able to top your allies just feels good if you feel like you're, strong, you're, you're in a stronger spot and also because they have an arms where you don't want them to get executed so I do understand that um, but you will spend a lot of money trying to get him topped if you let him dip so low. So if that is your strategy to keep your allies topped, especially versus an arms warrior, you want to make sure your enveloping is rolled out a little bit earlier. He's taking a lot of damage. You're poking your head out. Uh, doing okay. I like how you're poking here. But, I'll, okay, like, right now, 
Your positioning isn't bad, but I would have just rotated to this direction. They're already making their way this way, and you're channeling Soothing Mist in the middle of the map. This is a big no-no again. You cannot be channeling Soothing Mist in the middle of the map and not using your pillar. I see a lot of Mistweaver monks kind of strafe left and right, like, because they see other Mistweaver monks do that, or they assume that's the way to do it. You only do that kind of poke method where you peek in and out when you are on a pillar. If you're not on a pillar, you're not channeling Soothing Mist in the middle of the map, especially versus Unholy DK. Right now, you have a port in a good spot, but you know someone's gonna get gripped. You know you're gonna get gripped. So you need to make sure that you're behind the pillar, hugging it, don't give him too many opportunities to range, kick you one or two to grip you in, getting stunned and getting cleaved down before you can port out. There it is, you got locked because you're channeling through the mist. You rolled in the fight. Okay, you cannot ever, ever, ever roll in on an unholy DK because now you only have one roll to get out and because you're not very good at using your port, you have zero mobility after that roll. Since you're not going to remember or you haven't really been using your port as much as I'd like you to, rolling in on a DK who can already grip you in to land this mediocre CC chain when your allies don't have envelopings on them and they're already taking a lot of damage is a big mistake. Uh, I think you'll probably get punished for that. Let's see. Nice sweep. He's taking a lot of damage. You ate a fear that you didn't have to eat. You just got kicked. So you've been out of the fight for quite a while now. Nice. Um, okay. You cocooned. You didn't have to do that. You easily could have just popped enveloping into a Thunder Focus T into a big fuse. Using Thunder Focus T with your F fuse will preserve a lot of mana because you're getting triple the healing essentially with Fortune Turned. And you're not spending any more mana. So it's a lot more healing. It's like three of fuses for one. Using your bonus healing with your um, enveloping and the bonus healing on top of Fortune Turn, as well as Thunder Focus T, are ways to preserve mana. That's how you preserve mana as a Mistweaver. Using these bonus percentages and these bonus spells coupled with each other is how you actually heal for more, but use the same amount of mana, which in turn obviously preserves your mana. Another thing that I noticed is that you cocooned him, which I said I, I just mentioned that I wish you wouldn't have. You always want your ally to use their defensive first. And I've talked about this before, and I've played with a lot of players and it does drive me nuts. You want your allies to use their defensives first or, or at a higher rating, coordinate it to where you'll use your defensive first. I prefer that, because you overlapped here, I prefer always using my defensive first because that way, when they are, when I'm CC'd, like if the Druid clones you, then he can use his wall when you can't heal. So I like using my cocoon first. Some players prefer, you know, the other way around, but coordinate that. Always trust that one of the other, you know, maybe you're not in voice, I can't tell, but trust that you will work together. Um, you'll trust each other. Like, hey, I'll cocoon you first. Oh, don't worry, I'll tell you when to show. But again, a little bit of a pro tip in my opinion, always use your healer defensive first, because when you are locked out, especially Cocoon because it's a short cooldown, but when you are locked out or you're interrupted, silenced, feared, stunned, then he can shell when you can't offer your defensive or healing. Uh, okay, getting charged here. And right now you're making a big mistake. I'm sorry I have to pause it again, but I really think this is helpful information. You're running away from your port. So this is why I think you're gonna die this match or why you do eventually die, is you're moving away from your transcendence portal. Either set a new portal or move towards your portal. I know you just cheat torpedoed. You only have one charge right now. You need to be moving towards your portal so you can get out of here. And you're running away from it now. And you're also lining your allies. So uh, I've talked about this before and a lot. And see, you were moving towards your portal and then you ran away from it. And now you're gonna get stunned. What you are right now, what you are doing is you're really hurting your allies. You keep running behind pillars. You're not lining melee. They aren't casters. You always want to run through your allies, run to them. Don't run away from them. Like, you see, you keep Chi Torpedoing away from your portal. Like, right now, you could have Chi Torpedoed that way, or just literally walked, like, 10 feet and got away from these guys. And what you're going to do here, again, I guarantee you, is you're going to start running behind this pillar. They're melee. You're not getting away from them behind a pillar. Your best bet is to run to your allies or to your portal. You're killing yourself, effectively, by running over here by yourself, where they can't line, where you're lining them, the warrior can't charge, the hunter can't grappling hook, he can't get over to you. You're hurting your allies, and you're essentially killing yourself by running away from your portal um, and just walking in the middle of nowhere. Uh, you gotta be dead here. Stunned and dead, yeah. All right, you guys, so just my takeaways from that last match as well as the previous matches, um, just needing to be more aware of where you're kiting to, your positioning, not holding Soothing Mist too long, using Mana T, using your Thunder Focus T on a Fuse, um, 
just all of those things combined. Hope by watching this footage was a little bit more helpful. I hope I didn't come off too harsh. I'm only saying this in your best interest. I recommend for you personally, David, spend more time doing 2v2 matches so you get comfortable with using AMA and then transition to 3v3s. I always say that use 2v2s as a platform or at a low MMR, keep playing threes, but use these times and these games, and these matches, these brackets as a platform for you to get comfortable using AMA. So you'll do better in these 3v3 situations with lots of pressure and stress. Try and use voice with your allies so you can better coordinate your defensives. These are all things that are required to be a good player. So again, I hope it was helpful for you guys. If you have any healer footage, if any of you watching right now have any healer footage, I'll put the instructions on how you guys can send them to me like on the screen somewhere here. I'll most likely prefer footage that's like in a YouTube format video, has to be 720p to 1080p just so it's clear for the viewers to watch. I'll put the guidelines on the screen here. It could be any healer whatsoever, a paladin, a priest, um, you know, a druid, even if I don't play that specific healer, I can tell you what you're doing wrong in terms of like your basic rotation, your uh, positioning, your allies abilities, you know, not looking out for certain things. These are things I can point out from my perspective. And again, I'll put the link or I'll put like the list of instructions somewhere on the screen here. And you can follow those and just email me the link to your YouTube video and I'd be more than glad to review it for you. That's gonna do it for this video, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. If you have any more questions regarding this footage, leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you guys right away. Try not to miss me on my YouTube live stream where I answer all of your guys' questions in depth. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.